finally in April of 2022, I had my implants removed. And like within that night after I had them removed, my face started producing its own natural, natural oils again. Um, cause my face was, I, I, I didn't know it was dry, but obviously it was my scalp had been dry for like two years and nothing I did would fix that. So my face started producing oil again, which was like amazing. Um, I woke up in the morning and I just had so more energy. I'm always like, I always do everything I need to do and I never, I'm never too tired really. Um, and so, but I got up and I had all the natural energy. Like, you know how you feel when you just kind of are in your stride and you're like ready to go and you're almost antsy in a way like, oh, I just, let's just do something. You know, I didn't feel like that for years. I kind of felt like this labored energy where I'd be like, okay, get up, Danica, go work out. You got to go do this, clean your room. And so I had this natural energy within 12 hours of surgery. Um, and uh, I just felt amazing right away. I was losing, I was peeing 25 times a day because I was getting rid of inflammation. Um, so, so anyway, it was like already so much relief right away. I've learned that it comes in waves now. Healing comes in waves with um, detoxing because it's not like you get them removed and then all of a sudden all the problems are gone. But at least now I've taken out a large culprit and I now the things that I do are working like actually 13 days after surgery was over with I did labs and my thyroid numbers came up just within uh, range for the first time and I'm like okay at least it's doing something so um, things started improving um, again healing is not linear and it goes in waves but it's definitely working now so I've got some cleanup work to do but it's like far better far better Along the way, did any of the doctors, your OB, anybody you saw say, have you thought about breast implant no. illness? I brought it up. I brought it up to every one of them and I thought, well, could this be it? Um, and they're all like, no, probably not. They're like, I mean, maybe, uh -huh. but let's try these other things first. Right. And I can't blame them for saying, let's try these other things because the alternative is surgery, right. um, but none of them brought it up, and um, and none of them none of them believed that was the case. And what year did you get the implants in? I got them in two thousand and I got them November of two thousand and fourteen. Okay, and you said you first noticed stuff around two thousand eighteen, yep. like the weight gain. Yeah, so it probably took like three years, two, three, three, three and a half years. So the beginning part. Maybe not a lot of negative side effects. Didn't notice much. Uh -huh. Yeah, felt fine, recovered fine, like didn't really notice much. And these were silicone implants. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I think you and I talked about this on your podcast mm -hmm. um, or after it, like silicone, saline do different things in women apparently. You've seen this in your research about breast implant illness now. So there's more silicone and silicone implants, but there's still a silicone um, capsule or a silicone, um, bag essentially right. that the sil that the saline's in. Uh -huh. So you're still exposed to the silicone. Um, one of the things that's really common for women to get that have saline is mold. Yes. Um, because they inject them to fill them up. And so when they take the, the saline out, there's a lot of times it's very cloudy and little things going on inside of the implant. So Saline is a little bit higher, it seems like, for mold issues. Yeah, I talked about this on a previous podcast with my friend Evan Brand, mm. who alerted me to that. And he sent me photos of women's implants that have been removed and had visible mold on the outside of the implant. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's, it seems like, in your case, there was a real autoimmune syndrome going on yeah. with these silicone implants. Yeah. That didn't begin to manifest for three years or so. Yeah, yeah. It. Um, I, I have. I have. I have additional information now. Um, I actually. I don't, have you ever heard of the DNA company? No. Uh, there's a. There's a guy named Kashif Khan. He has a company called the DNA Company, and he was sent to me by Dave Asprey. Uh huh. Dave and him were working together on things because he does DNA analysis. Um, and so he, Kashif was doing work with doctors on um, breast implant illness and what could be the cause of it from a genetic perspective. And so he passed me along to Kashif. 
I did the DNA test. Um, I actually, funny enough, just this morning got the final results. Like okay. I got mo some of them last week, but there was a couple things that were missing. Um, and so I'm not going to be able to do like verbatim a great job of explaining this. But here's the sum of it basically is that there are certain pathways within the body that are going to make breast implants a problem because it's a foreign object and your body's going to attack it. Um, so I do a really good job. Well, first off, well, there's three things. One the my vessel lining is the poorest vessel lin lining that there is so what lines all of my veins is not quality at all okay um so that is like easy to inflame and that's uh that's all that's a problem in and of itself um then the other thing is that um i am really good at detoxing through the gut and environment things that come in to the point that I actually have an autoimmune response to it. My body's in overdrive, getting rid of things, and it creates an autoimmune response. And the third thing is that when I my cells um, uh, oxidate and get and clean flush, the oxidation I don't clear the oxidation. Mm -hmm. So when I work out really hard and breathe really heavy and create that oxidative stress in the body. My body doesn't clear it. Mm -hmm. So now I just have this buildup process of happening, happening within my body that is making everything. It's just, I'm just getting sicker. So my body's not able to recover. It's not able to, um, it's just not, it's not operating properly. So, um, for those few reasons, he said was probably why I did so did poorly with it. Now I also have some genetic markers that, um, he just explained them. They're the, um, uh, it's serotonin was what he was telling me about and neuroepinephrine. And I have the best, best possible serotonin and neuroepinephrine numbers and markers. They come into balance really easily. I don't create trauma with stimulus. Okay. Um, so I don't have emotional responses and mark it, but I remember. So I actually learn from it, but I don't have an emotional trauma response. And then serotonin, I don't get up or down too easy. So I stay really calm and balanced. And so I don't notice when I don't feel bad. And I also have certain, I think it's maybe BDNF is something, is maybe the, the genetic pathway. But I, when I like something, I get really into it. And I have all the energy in the world for the things I'm passionate about. And since I'm retired, I can do whatever the hell I want. So I only do things that I like doing. So I stay very energized through the things that I'm doing. And I have, he said that there was someone else that he works with that um, is uh, like an extreme marathoner and, um, or triathlete. And she was doing this run where other people were dying. And and the ambulance got to her at one point and as soon as she could stand up, she just started running again. And she has similar pathways to me. So he's like, you don't know if you don't feel good. You don't, you're just, you're, you're just so, you're able to push through at any cost. So now he's like, you probably would feel, you, two people with the same exact issue, you versus someone else with different pathways and you feel fine, but this person might not be able to get out of bed. So I kept pushing, pushing. So how long did I feel bad? How long was my body not working right? Probably the whole time. But like the body's amazing and it's amazing. Like you think about the garbage that a lot of people eat. I mean, even the people that eat healthy, you're probably thinking like, if somebody's crushing vegetables, they, they're, they're doing better than almost everyone in the world, right? But you're like, There's, it's still garbage. Um, <laughs> yes. And so imagine now that like these, there's people that never eat well in their whole entire life and they live till they're 90. It's like the body is amazing actually. And so, but I push it really hard and I expect a lot of it. And so, um, so I, I don't think that most of people would go to the doctor for what I went to the doctor for because I just, I'm, I didn't feel too bad. Um, but I really want to feel good. I really want to look good. I want to feel good and I want to operate well and I want to live really well for a long time.